Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, here's another podcast on uh, a very interesting book that you don't hear much about from the famous radionic practitioner. Matter of fact, the practitioner who actually coined the term radionics was uh, Dr. Ruth B. Drown, Wisdom from Atlantis. Now, she did two books. I have already reviewed the other book of hers, and that is up in our um, organizational library and in Patreon. So you can look at her uh, important, as she saw, important uh, metaphysical ideas. And this is another one. There's really nothing Atlantis about this whatsoever. It's typical, uh, I call turn of the century uh, spiritualism. Uh, that is so rampant at that particular time. You know, and as I go through more and more literature, I find out that there's virtually nothing has much value that's old. Um, it's really everything is outdated. I mean, we are living in a completely and totally new reality with a whole bunch of tools we can use. Uh, you know, I remember getting my first metaphysical book, uh, listening to the Bill Jenkins show in Los Angeles and listening to Dale Walker talk about amazing quartz crystals. And he was the first person that, to put out a metaphysical book on crystals. Uh, so to read that book today, which is out there and available, I think it's in our library, um, is kind of a joke uh, because things have changed. And there's so many things that have changed. Um there's virtually no reason to read old stuff anymore. We're talking stuff that, you know, particularly things that go back to the 30s, 40s, 50s, etc. I mean, it's really, most of it is outdated. Uh, and it is no longer applicable to modern society. And what's going on? There are much better sources of things. Secondly, there's better understandings of things. So if I find any books that are kind of old... Uh, I don't really read them anymore. There's not much to learn from them. This goes from all the old silly texts that people have been reading for literally thousands of years, religious books. There's nothing in them. And they keep searching to find things. Oh, the Bible codes. Oh, numbers in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Well, that's exciting. So the whole idea is all this old thinking and the people that clumb on to this uh, bad information from the past, you're doing yourself a disservice. But you have to remember that all information out there that's been published, and there's so much of it now. We actually have so much information uh, other than a few specific areas. We don't really need any more information. Um, everything has been written. Everything you need to know about a particular subject matter is out there. What it really has to be done is you have to test it Find out what works for you. And that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter if this makes uh, metaphysical scientific uh, sense. Does it work for you? The other thing is looking back at waste your time information. What's underneath the pyramids? Well, uh, there are giant tunnels all over this world that have never been explored. And for one reason or another, I don't know why they don't want to tell everybody that there's these giant uh, tunnels and cavities underneath the pyramids, etc. Uh, many people uh, have stated that there are large enough to build giant cities under there, which you could fit hundreds of thousands of people. And there are many of these tunnels all around the world, not just in Egypt. And Egypt, of course, gets a lot of press because of where it's at. And the fact is, is that there's nothing around it. It's easy to get to. But that's not where the great societies are. Really nothing great came out of the crotch of the world, which is called the Middle East and the Arabic-type philosophies. Nothing from that part of the world has much value. Only uh, some information which are combined with the higher thoughts of the Greeks and the Romans, the Celts, etc., who produced uh, very practical good systems known as Stoicism, uh, Marcus Aurelius, etc., who had a really great way of living. This, of course, was thrown down the dumper, flushed, pooed upon uh, by the invading Arabic forces that are in Central Europe. Uh, the German Arabs, the Swiss Arabs, the uh, Austrian Arabs, and their little neighbors, who then uh, pushed their will with their very perverted thinking from Freud, Reich, and everything else. Uh, you get into all that stuff and you find out, really, this is a bunch of trash. Um... One of the things you have to be careful with reading any literature is that you really have to filter it through 
uh, a higher consciousness, which you can't do because you don't know that much. So reading an old book like this, yeah, there's little interesting bits and pieces in it, but do you know enough to throw the trash out and keep the good stuff? And that's why you need to be working with uh, a person of high consciousness and be connected to the energy of a high consciousness organization. Because just by being around something, being connected to it, even if you go there just on your computer or watch a video like this, is critical to your evolution. Because you're connected to all trash. Scumbucket teachers, liar ministers and preach people, all the corruptness of society is going to make you more corrupt and feed you garbage. The more you're connected to a stream of empowerment, the better your life will be. And that means watching things like this, but also participating. Everyone should be liking this video. They should also be a member of Patreon, uh, which uh, is important to stay connected and get the news. It's only $6 a month uh, for your basic membership. And of also being part of All Access, which gives you, uh, gives you access to our library and other things. The problem with Patreon is you really can't access information there as, as easy as it should be or coordinate it. But there are big giant libraries with all access and everything else. This is showing a commitment. And when you commit to an organization and you give them money, um, we're not talking about lots of money, uh, but just giving somebody money and then going to their website, you're connecting into that energy that that organization gives off. That's why it's very important that you be careful who you do support. Uh, because we continue to support loser, liar organizations, things that go back thousands of years that have done absolutely nothing, like all religions. And I'm not talking about the Bible. I got all religions. There's not a single one that has any value uh, other than using its books to wipe your bottom with. So the whole idea is we have to understand that. But when you connect to something, when you read a book from a particular religion, whatever that is, you're connecting to their energy and that flows right into you. And you're going to get the energy that they have to offer. And all of these uh, organizations have done absolutely nothing. The other thing, are we going to learn anything about how the uh, pyramids are made? Does that really affect your life? You're going to go out and build a pyramid? You're going to use the levitation powers uh, to... Uh, build your own home? Well, this is not going to happen. So people that invented the 100-mile-plus carburetors uh, are kind of taking dirt naps. They disappeared. They were murdered, etc. You want a good cure? Yeah, well, all those people are dead, too. Uh, so we have a real serious problem. So if you're going to live in, you got to understand the kind of society you're living in. If you're going to live in this kind of society, uh, trying to a look into things that have no value. Does it really value if we have extraterrestrials here or not? Not really. doesn't do anything. Uh, now, if you're plagued by them and you need protection and they're somehow popping up in front of you, none of this is, uh, you know, that is when you uh, potentially have to become involved at a higher level. But nobody's going to tell you how to stop that stuff. Only I did that in the past. Uh, and we continue to do that. Uh, the latest uh, reportings from people who were contacted by extraterrestrials almost all the time, um, which I did a big bunch of lectures on, which is on this channel, uh, don't know nothing. They've never been given anything. Just like the goofball Billy Meyer. I'm a goofball. I'm a one-armed, freaky little monkey. Uh, so the whole idea is that this guy, this... Uh, um, basically German Arab that he is, um, has absolutely nothing to show you. He's 86 years old. He's written book after book of nebulous garbage talking about worthless information. Not a single practical information. Not how to grow crops better. Not how to heal your body. Absolutely nothing. And it continues to. But I did go to his site a month or two ago and you can get a brown kelp uh, tablets up there. Thank you for that breakthrough from his little buddy that worships uh, Myers, whatever that stooge name is. Uh, thank you. We we need seaweed. And, you know, the problem with anything from the ocean is that, you know, it's full of toxins. The ocean is a sewer. It's a, it's a complete and total trash hole. Nobody should get anything out of the ocean and use it for anything. Uh, so the whole idea is that's the big after uh, 60, 70 years of contact with the little extraterrestrials that he had sex with and everything else and all the other things he claims to have done uh, is all a bunch of nonsense. Nothing has come from it. And I don't care if his pictures of 
uh, ships and everything else are real or not. Who cares? I don't, I don't need pictures of ships. Does that do anything for me? And of course, we live in a time where there's really nothing that you see, hear, or even touch uh, that you can actually have any faith in. That's a fool's way of interpreting that your primitive program senses uh, are going to give you information of any value. <coughs> so, if there's some secret to levitating and building giant structures, and you got to remember the stone builders, as I call them, uh, go back 50,000 years, if not longer, and have built all these things. A, a particular group of people went around the world building all this stuff and have left it there, and people took it over. That's what the Mayans and Aztecs said. And, of course, as we get more um, closer to modern times with the Egyptians and even the Mayans and everything else, uh, the bottom line is that their technology becomes cruder and cruder. So, but certainly the ignorant, bogus, uh, scientific, uh, doo-doo mind uh, that has produced our engineers and our physicists are never going to be able to figure out something like that. They're going to look back to what the answers are based on today's technology, and everything else has no value. After all, that's what Occam Razor says. The most um, uh, simplest answer is the real answer. Uh, it's a rock. They cut it with saws. They use guys, you know, uh, well, it's heavy, so they had to use a thousand guys. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you get. Or Bayesian thinking. Wow. If it's, uh, we got to equate it to something that's already happened because then that makes it real. So nothing new that you're in any way uh, comes up because you don't have the mentality to understand it uh, can't be real. Thank you, Bayesian. So, and this is, of course, what your scientists believe in, the people that are caused what we have today, which is crimes against humanity by only producing deadly weapons and no answers. So the point is, none of this stuff has any value. And who cares? You're not, as an individual, have any power what to do to be able to do anything. So you got to take care of your own life. And if you can figure out some way uh, of doing that, well, that's great. But we're not here to solve the world problems. The world doesn't want to be saved, and you're a fool if you try and do it. So it really doesn't matter how the pyramids are made. It doesn't really matter whether there's extraterrestrials here. All of that is way out of our control and pretty much out of the control of everybody. Nobody really cares. It just kind of gets you into hot water. The problem is, is that not a single person on this planet, other than myself at this point, and I'm sure there's others, but they're not public, are seeking truth. They want to um, uh, fill their agenda. And I found this yet again with the bottom feeder martial artists. They're not seeking truth to really what's happening with the body energies, which are 3,000 years old and proven to work. And we're going to be doing a little video on that where Von Dahm came out and talked about just touching somebody and knocking them down and that it works all the time. But they're not seeking truth. They're seeking their agenda. And if this stuff works, well, they don't really have a channel anymore. It's no longer Bozo Boy and his big red nose and giant shoes. It's now something else. But nobody wants to go out there and test someone uh, to find out if what they're doing is correct, even though they've been doing it for a long period of time. These are people within the martial arts uh, industry uh, that have been well recognized. And there are hundreds of people doing this, and people want to say all of this is not real. Well, that's not it at all. So then they want to test it in their own way by taking some idiot, uh, Ponto and Kika, and say, here, press me here. This is what I saw. See if I fall down. That's not a proper test. But for them it is because they're ignorant buffoons that are only caring about their own little pocket money and how they're going to make money by doing their stooges attitudes. But this is, not a, this is not something that is only within the martial arts industry. And a lot of people have been able to prove all these touching things, but they're not done properly. So people want to take one particular test that was done by National Geographic magazine. I've covered that already, and I've dealt with these kind of people. They are not credible in any way. They're nothing but camera and interviewers. They have no background, and they don't even know even how to do their own job right. As I said, I had two filmings with uh, these kind of people. They spent 12 hours with me, and of course, they do this with everybody, and they get about three minutes worth of tape. What can you say in three minutes? Nothing. So, 
Uh, but this is how they operate. And then they get these big paychecks because they see how much work they did. Work you did, you spent 12 hours wasting somebody's time and they don't pay, any, pay you for any of this stuff. And then what you get from it? Nothing. So this is what they're not seeking truth and they're very stupid people. So you can't work with people that don't have open minds and don't know anything about the subject matter. And secondly, you're seeking truth. What is the truth of it? And nobody cares. The unamazing James Randi, who wanted to uh, supposedly had a million dollars to give to people that could prove themselves, never had a third party that would give the money out. He would decide who got things from his prejudiced, corrupt, deviant attitude, being paid off by uh, drug companies and everything else. And his organization was full of government agents, military people, and all our dastardly dudes who are there right now. And of course, we uh, a theatrical magician is somebody that we should give credit to? Well, what is that not? This guy's not trained by anything about doing tricks. Tricks are for kids. So the whole idea is that all those things that go on that nobody really wants to talk about. Uh, so this is the problem that we run into. So the whole idea is work within your life and there's lots of things you can do to make your life healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. And that's what it's all about. Whether there's aliens, whether there's Atlantis and all these other things, who gives a rat's bottom? So it means it's meaningless to you. And uh, spending time researching any of this is just wasting your time. What do you know about body energies? What do you know about how to use equipment? What are you empowering your life with? Are you empowering your life with the reading and watching endless stuff on aliens, which has no value to you? Or other garbage? Uh, so the whole idea goes on and on. While it is kind of fascinating that we have this whole stone building culture that seems to have built all these minds, but it's one little culture that did this. And um, what value does it have to you? This, this was tens of thousands of years ago. And nobody has any idea how this was done and never will. I mean, we have very primitive, as you said, scientific people. Our engineers know absolutely nothing. Uh, we certainly have been able to build skyscrapers and they don't apparently fall down unless they're blown up. Uh, so we have a certain element of uh, engineering skill. Other things are still very primitive, just like computers are. Computers don't do anything until kind of recently, where we have this, quote, AI, uh, which now is kind of doing something. Instead of giving you a form to fill in, now they're filling in the form for you. And a lot of this is just plain bogus and wrong. I've seen letters and books written by them. And it's a lot of verbose um, double talking and a lot of this stuff as well. But at least it's doing something. But I'm not sure what's going to happen if everybody uses some sort of AI to do everything. We're going to get a very uh, common similarity between everything. There's never going to be any great thoughts there. Because in the end, AI is using already created information to recreate the information there. Kind of like what Einstein did when he rewrote uh, the papers on relativity uh, that nobody could understand. And he apparently wrote papers that, yeah, we get it now, Einsteiny baby. So um, you're going to get a lot of sameness. We're never going to get any breakthroughs that way. You can't get a breakthrough unless there's been a breakthrough talked about. So AI is just going to uh, keep repeating the same old vomit over and over again. So we've got to understand all that as we get to it. So uh, let's talk about here um, this book a little bit. Well, this is an interesting little book, uh, The Wisdom of the Lances by, as again, uh, Ruth Drown. It's a nice little book published in 1946. Um, this is the company, it's even because uh, she was out of Los Angeles. Um, this is the company that actually printed it. It's got kind of this nice little 40s thing to it. But what's interesting is that this book is signed by Ruth Drown, 1946. Isn't that interesting? And we're going to... Uh, uh, be uh, offering this book on our website, uh, which you can get for a few dollars and it'll have this in it. So, um, you know, I always like to get things like this and I'm going to use this, copy this many times and I'm going to put it under my radionic machine to give it a little boost. You can tap into these people. Now, I have a communication with Earth Drown and uh, Tesla, um, but they don't really have anything to say past what they've done already. They, they don't know anything now. But again, uh, for general information, here we go.
So again, she's basically saying right here, the wisdom from the past was received through inspirational pathways from the etheric uh, records. While the words are English, the style is Atlantean and the wisdom is eternal. 1946. Now, the, the bottom line is that uh, this is just channel. We call it channel now. And, you know, again, let's see if we can get, is there an actual... I think there is a content page in here. But this is an original copy. It's got this um, plastic kind of cover on it with the back looks like this. Uh, it was a very nice addition, basically. But, you know, it gets into a lot of very typical 1920s turn of the century. Uh, where's a... For surely thou art a child of God. So it's the same old thing. This is spiritualist nonsense. And of course, the Atlanteans didn't believe in your traditional God, nor did they in any way believe in these silly documents uh, that were made way after them. I mean, the oldest documents we have only probably go back 4,000 years. You're talking about Atlantis going back 50,000 years. And they wouldn't use this dribble. Um, God is all. Nothing is manifested or unmanifested, that is not God. So this is the kind of dribble you're going to get in here. And, you know, there's all sorts of nice little things. Uh, somebody has scribbled in here and wrote their little opinions. I always like those. It's kind of fun to read those. Um, but, I mean, there's really nothing in here of any great... You know, I've read so many books like this of these uh, old and new uh, philosophical understandings. There's really nothing to learn uh, from them. Now, if you're a beginner, you can get something out of here. But one of the problems is you've got to be careful you're not caught in the dribble that these people give you. You know, you have to be at a certain level and read these things and be able to pick out from a high level of knowledge and consciousness what is interesting what is good and what is different. Now, how do you know that? You don't know that. That's <laughs> plain and simple. This comes from years of study. And even people who study for years may not really get it. I mean, there's people that study all these worthless um, uh, holy books or religious books, I should call them, and they really don't get it. They're looking at it from their own very prejudiced, very closed-minded point of view. They're not seeking Gnosis. They're not seeking truth. They're seeking to fulfill their own belief system. And this is what most people do. You look for information to back up what you already know. Well, you're never going to learn anything that way. And you're in a constant state. And this is very typical of schmientists who do this all the time. So they're only going to look at things that reaffirm what they've already learned. Well, you're never going to learn anything if that's how you approach everything. You have to be open-minded to the fact that this is something to think about, that we don't know everything, and that all of this stuff, when you uh, worship and you're on the knees to your particular uh, God form, whether that's a uh, science or some other pseudo-pursuit that people think is scientific, um, you are just enslaving yourself. And if you want to reaffirm information about a particular mythical person in the sky, that's done absolutely nothing uh, in a world that is nothing but misery, suffering, and death, and then say, oh, yeah, but I'm going to go to the marshmallows in the sky. And, of course, they know everything. And, of course, most religious books in general all say the same thing. There's really nothing new there. And the people that read them get out of it what their level of consciousness is. And generally, because all religious people are hateful scumbuckets, they get nothing out of it. They want to reaffirm their hateful positions to people that they don't like, people that are different from them, people that they want to criticize and attack because they feel part of the lynch mob that they call a religion. So this is what we run into, and this is what most people do. You're, you're reading information, in most cases, to reaffirm your belief system. That's your first error. Secondly, you can't do any of this yourself. If you're not connected to an organization and to a person who has spent their over 55 years researching like I've done, and who have this very high level of consciousness, you're not going to learn anything. You're going to learn from your consciousness, which is highly flawed, highly corrupt, because, of course, that's what the system is. Uh, the worst people you can learn anything from is a teacher. These are the scum of the earth. These are bottom feeders. So the bottom line, as long as you're going to hang out with the bottom feeders that are going to just give you the same old bottom feeding feces uh, and have you eat what they've been eating, well, you're going to have the same problem. 
So this is why the world never changes, because people aren't seeking truth. They're seeking confirmation of their very flawed belief systems. Um, and of course, this is just a very, very Christian type look at everything. And of course, there's little bits and pieces in this uh, that are uh, useful in your life that are kind of interesting, but it's all been said already. You know, when you get old philosophical books like this, it's already been out there. There are millions of books out there. There's no way you can go through everything that have much better information that is now applicable to this time and reality. You know, this is something that was written in 1946. You know, what is this, 80 years ago? Um, oh, it's good because it's old. You know, I used to hear that, particularly from the hippy dippies. Oh, they always wanted to go back in time where they would have been hung and shot and everything else um, uh, for their belief systems if they went back to that and how racist and prejudiced those uh, times were. But it's always going back. Everybody knew something better, you know, working with your hands with 1920 technology. Oh, that was better than using modern machines if you're a moron, because that's what that kind of thinking breeds. So the point is, is just because you're reading a document that a whole bunch of stooges have filed, have followed for a few thousand years, uh, texts that are almost unreadable, who just really speak gobbledygook, no matter where they come from, is a path of stupidity. So looking back at these things, well, of course, I read this because Ruth Drown is one of the number one radionic practitioners of her time. And really, what everybody's using today is kind of based in her technology, particularly uh, the Radionic Association out of the UK uh, and De La War, of course, copied her machines. I'm not sure if they work together or not. There's a kind of a confusion there. And of course, everybody, Bruce Copin copied De La War's machine. So all of them are based in this same uh, basic design. Ruth Drown uh, changed the what we would call radionics to what the radionics is today because Albert Abrams, uh, did not use these type of machines. She also was vehemently against electricity. And uh, everything that she did was very metaphysically based. Uh, I had no idea of this until I kind of stumbled. I was looking at the different books she read. And there were two books she wrote. Um, what was it? 49 Ways to Wisdom, Path to Wisdom, or whatever it is. This book, which didn't have to do with her uh, radionic practices. Um... And it comes down that she was very metaphysically oriented. She used the uh, Kabbalah and other things. Again, we're getting into very corrupted, bad forms of learning uh, that we get from all these religious books. And there's nothing special about anything out of the Kabbalah, people. Uh, that's another fantasy. Nor is there anything special about the very pagan Jewish religion uh, that is out there, particularly conservative Jewish religion, which still sacrifices animals and other things. I mean, it's a very backward religion, ultimately. And like everything, are there some good parts of it? And I've always liked Jews and are a big supporter of Israel. But the bottom line is that there's certainly nothing profound about their documents. And certainly there's nothing profound about the Kabbalah and everything else. So uh, these are all books that get very confusing. You spend your life studying them. And um, uh, I'm not sure it has done anything for these people to begin with. Um, the, ge the genius of the Jewish people is kind of unexplainable. We're not really sure why this is, but certainly interesting. Uh, 17 million people are Jews, supposedly. It does, that doesn't even make sense, but they have, are in everything as influencers uh, to a large degree, uh, no matter what the professional field is. So it's quite fascinating. I'm going to be doing another little talk on that in the near future. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, all this old stuff is just that. It's old. Basically, it's worthless. Um, uh, there's nothing special here. And there was nothing special about Ruth Drown, unfortunately. And even my uh, contact, my spiritual contact with her, she really has nothing new to offer. And it's the same old stuff uh, that she had before. And it's a fairly confused system. And unfortunately, uh, as it appears from all the research that can be done about Ruth Drown, is that she failed to prove anything that she said she could do uh, to very high levels. She was tested in 1950 at Chicago University and failed everything that uh, she was asked to identify. Uh, she then failed again. I believe it was in the 60s by local authorities who tested her um, where she got everything wrong. 
And she plays the con game, meaning she'll give you 50 things, or let's not say 50, let's say 10 or 15 things you have wrong with you um, to cloud the issue. And then you pick one of those that fits your condition. This reeks of someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Now, I don't think in any way, just like I don't find any uh, radionic scalar energy practitioners who are 100% frauds that are just doing this to make money, but certainly that's part of it. Ruth Drown had a very big organization, and I'm assuming she made a lot of money. She had teaching, she sold instruments. All of these things went on for, for many, many years while she was in practice. Uh, so she did make a lot of money from this, and of course, that's what life is all about. If you don't make money, you can't do anything. So the whole idea is to bankrupt people, get them on the street so they can't function. She was able to continue to go with it. Uh, but she was tested, as was Abrams, who refused to test himself, had a underling go there, because that's a cop-out. Uh, well, it wasn't me, uh, that guy. Well, you know, I let you talk to him, but he's not all that qualified. This is what you get. So she was tested directly on several occasions and failed. Now, what was her success rate? Uh, how well did she do anything? Well, we have no idea. There's really no records of uh, doing this. She claims that maybe she was practicing for 50 or 60 years. Uh, it has been estimated that she uh, worked on about 30,000 people, but how many people got success from that? And again, we have no records, and of course it was not in the time of the internet or any other time. Uh, you know, before the internet, there's no way to get information around quickly. And secondly, I don't know if information on the internet is good or not anyway. So we just don't know with her... Um, the lack of really definitive or high-level thinking that this book in particular offers uh, really kind of sums up a lot of what she was involved with and what she was doing. She didn't have electronic background. Uh, she worked in a uh, for uh, Southern California Edison, I believe, uh, with a labeling or addressing machine. That was her extent, apparently, of working with, quote, uh, electronics of the nature that it was. And that's really not even electronics to a degree. Uh, there's really nothing, uh, you know, it's, it's a labeling machine. They labeled the envelopes, I guess. I'm not sure what the whole story there. And she was able to uh, pick that up um, uh, f to be able to understand the process of that. But, you know, that, that is not electronics. That is not necessarily what's going on there. She had interest in radios, which were just coming out. Uh, so all of those things come together that it's very primitive stuff, just like all uh, the electronics and everything else used back then. Um, all of it was very primitive stuff that you wouldn't make today. And if Ruth Drown was making uh, radionic machines today, she wouldn't be using 1920 electronics. Uh, that you can guarantee. Just like Tesla wouldn't be. They'd be using the modern stuff that has now been perfected. And we have a lot of that. So we got to stop looking back. You know, the problem is everybody seems to be turning their head looking behind them and they keep running into walls and telephone poles because you're not looking in front of you and paying attention to what's here and now. So all of that stuff and the entire industry of radionics goes back 50 to 60 years. I'm the only person that has any new tech. It's using lasers and using hybrid electronics and using hybrid valves, tubes, etc. Uh, and you want to keep good stuff, which uh, the new valves, the new tubes, uh, have been shown and will be used in computers soon because it processes huge amounts of information quickly, like I've been telling people for years. So the whole idea is you want to have a combination, but you don't want to get caught making things the old way. The old ways um, may have some values and you cherry pick it, but in general, uh, the new electronics and the new way of processing information, the new way of sensing things, the use of lasers integrated with um, basically uh, what is um, uh, electronics that have been modified, the energies have been modified, is very, very critical. So uh, using something that is old, uh, thinking it's going to produce results. We don't know if anything was produced in results back then either. We just don't know. There's no history of what she was able to do or not to do. When she was tested, when people went there with a, uh, with a verifiable illness, and all the records changed. Some people said she was sent to animal blood. <clears throat> well, it wasn't true. Apparently, what they sent there per recent records that uh, I have been able to access is that someone was given her had tuberculosis. 
and she didn't get it. Now, if you can't get tuberculosis, there's a problem, and she named five things uh, that the person didn't have but didn't get tuberculosis. So the whole idea is that uh, there is a problem here, and uh, I think a lot of people are persecuted not because something works, is because things don't work. But of course, the medical industry is afraid of any new people, so they persecute people like they persecuted her and Wilhelm Reich. But we just don't know how good their stuff was at all. So, um, and we really don't know, uh, well, you, you can get roof drown equipment uh, that's around still occasionally, uh, but the whole idea is we don't really know what they were using. What she used in her offices was different. Uh, she sold uh, machines of a particular type, <clears throat> And we're still doing stuff from her, which is what you're going to find uh, in lots of places from uh, Bruce Copeland, who, of course, now they've moved into complete trash, which is the uh, digital units. And, of course, they were using these typical dial units, which the Radionics Association today is using. They're copies of Roos Drown, Della War units. And here we are, you know, 70, 80 years in advance, all non-electric. And does any of it work? Well, the problem is, is when... You don't really come out and have a, an exact way of doing things to say, well, this is the best way to do it. Well, no, there's three machines. There's a computer machine that you work on your computer. There's a digital number thing you punch in. And there's the old roost drown machine. Well, which, which is it? They all work. And uh, all of this gets to be quite uh, upsetting and problematic to everyone. So uh, this is the way of the world. A uh, book like this, as I said, uh, people will be able to access this um, on my website. We'll be able to buy a copy of this um, at, uh, at a low cost to look at. Of course, it'll be given to our Patreon members in our library. Hope you'd enjoy it. Until next time.